we start uh, we celebrate here in the U.S. was well, called Memorial Day. For those of you in other countries, Memorial Day means we uh, thank God for the lives of the soldiers who have given their lives for this country and uh, for for the preservation of this great nation. Many have given their lives in the history of this nation, um, starting with uh, we go back to the Revolutionary War and and the War of 1812, and then the the uh, War with Mexico um, in in the 1840s, and then the Civil War, and then the Spanish-American War, 1898, and then we come up and we celebrate the deaths of those who gave their lives during World War One and uh, World War Two, the Korean War, and then the Vietnamese War, and and the uh, War in the Middle East, and so we we just give thanks to the uh, people who gave their lives for the preservation of this country. No, no, we have not always been correct as a nation. We have not always been political correct, nor have we always been correct in war. But the fact is men and women who believe in this great nation uh, gave their lives. They made the ultimate sacrifice so that this nation can be free. You know, a little bit of trivia Memorial Day began in 18, around 1884 in South Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, Memorial Day. And those of you who are listening in from the beach or the seashore and you're relaxing uh, on the seashore under the sun and just enjoying yourself. And Memorial Day is not a time of celebration, but we've turned it into a barbecue and picnicking and going to the shore. Well, if you're fortunate to do that, do that. But don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. But Memorial Day began in 1884 in South Carolina in the black community, ladies and gentlemen, in the black community. And now, and I'm going to give this because it's history. This is not racism. This is historical truth. A, a, a number of blacks in South Carolina assembled together at a certain uh, churchyard cemetery in South Carolina in 1884, and they gave tribute to the 267 black Civil War soldiers who were planted in a mass grave in South Carolina. They gave tribute and recognition to them, and ever since then, ladies and gentlemen, Memorial Day has been celebrated in America. America has gotten far away from uh, of celebrating God and, and thanking God for those who have given their lives for this nation. Now it's a long weekend. It means no work. It means party. It means drinking, smoking dope, running women, running men, having a celebration and enjoying the uh, worshiping the sun at the seashore. But Memorial Day means more than that, ladies and gentlemen. So we ought to take time and thank God that this nation is still a free nation. And that men and women have given their lives so that this nation can be free. And I think back of all my buddies who died in Vietnam. There's a whole lot of them. There is a plethora. If I were to visit the Vietnamese wall, I could see a lot of my buddies' names on that wall. And some of you, some of you are Korean War veterans. And some of you are, are, are um, Desert Storm veterans. And... Um, some of you are, 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 are men and women who have lost loved ones, lost relatives, who have given their lives for this nation. And so it's Memorial Day, and in this nation, we thank God for those who have given their lives for our freedom. We can't pray for them. They're gone. There's nothing we can do for them. But we can pray for the families, the descendants, and the relatives of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you and we give thanks to you for this new day. We worship you and bless you and honor you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for the celebration of Memorial Day. And we thank you for the many people who gave their lives in the, for the cause of freedom, that this nation can be a free nation. Now, Lord, we pray that you bless the families of those who have lost loved ones in warfare. And, Lord, we pray that this nation will wake up and, and walk in love with one another. We pray for the end of wars, God. We pray that nations will realize that 
killing one another is not the answer, but but loving you through Jesus Christ is the answer. So we pray for a wake-up call for the nations and for this nation. We ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, God, and cleanse us of all iniquity and all unrighteousness. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, we ask that you pray for our, we ask that you bless our president, God, and our leaders, God, that they will lead this nation in righteousness and holiness, and that they will know you and the, and as Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, and that they will be saved. We pray for saved leaders, God, not people who just talk the talk, but people who are truly born again, righteous leaders, born again by the Spirit of God, that will lead this nation and for every nation, we pray for righteous leaders who will lead them in, in holiness and in righteousness. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again to the online church. And we praise God. We praise God. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. And we thank God for his goodness and his mercy. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him praise god and i thank god i thank god i thank god well ladies and gentlemen uh before we get into our word today and we recognize so many of you out there and we thank god for you we thank god for those of you who listen to the the uh recordings later on we thank you that you're working in your your local church and you're helping to lift up Jesus Christ in your local church and many of you come on later on and hear this message and we just thank you we thank God for planting you where you are planted and so the online church we're here to be a part as a part of the church to present Jesus Christ and we reach out to those who don't have a local church to attend we reach out to those who cannot attend church. We reach out to those who are sick and shut in. We uh, reach out to those who have no place where they can go and hear the word of God. And so God has made it possible that by way of your cell phone, by way of your computer, we can worship God together. So let us never think that we're better than anyone, better than the those who attend the brick and mortar church no we are part of the body of christ just as the body needs the arms and the hands and the feet and the legs and the head every part has its purpose well we have our purpose here on the online church and we're lifting up the blood-stained banner we're presenting jesus christ as lord and savior and so we thank you praise god we thank you we're going to ask our or uh, Ryan Trogler, Trogler come on uh, in a moment and, and, and lead us in prayer, and then we're going to hear some word. But before Ryan comes on, and uh, Ryan's out in his, in his garden planting seeds, he said, praise God. You know, the online church can reach you when you're planting seeds in your garden. Wes said he's out there on this, cutting his lawn. He's in church cutting his lawn, riding his ride on mower and cutting the lawn. You see, God has made it possible that the word of God can reach you where you are. Praise God. <clears throat> so tell people. They don't have to hide. People don't have to hide under the bed during the church hour because they're not in church. No, don't hide under the bed. Get your cell phone and dial the numbers that we give you. Or get on your computer and, 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 and enter into the presence of God with us. Hallelujah. People don't have to feel guilty about missing church. Sometimes it, missing church might be a blessing for some of the things going on in some of these churches. Missing church might be a blessing. But praise God, we bring the true church, the real church to you, the word of God to you. Before Ryan comes on, uh, we want to I'll just mention this. You know, there is a church in Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be careful what church you attend. You better check out that church. There's a church in Atlanta just hired a witch. They hired a witch, a visionary. Ladies and gentlemen, a church in Atlanta. I'm not going to give you the name of the church, but they just hired a witch, a visionary, to help them grow the ministry. Now you know that is not of God. Come on, somebody, and give God the praise. You've got to be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is trying everything but Jesus. 
The church is trying everything but the Word of God. But we're going to stand on the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think that's something, if you think that's something, there is a church in Zimbabwe. Now, this is the kicker. This is the kicker. Hold on to your seat. Hey, Wes, buckle up, man, when you hear this. There's a church in Zimbabwe that is selling tickets to heaven. The pastor is selling tickets to heaven. He has made up golden tickets. They're made out of uh, 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 overlaid with gold. They're not real gold. They're fake gold. And he's selling golden tickets to his congregation for $500 a ticket. Ladies and gentlemen, $500 a ticket to uh, 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 get a, buy a ticket to heaven. And the pastor said, buy one of these tickets. And you can go straight to heaven when you die. You don't have to go through the judgment. You don't have to stand in the judgment. You go straight to heaven. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a sin. It's straight from the pit of hell. And Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. And we shut that activity down in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, they're doing all kinds of crazy things in the church. That's why you've got to be careful where you go. You've got to be careful who you unite with. You've got to be careful. You need to test the spirit by the spirit. A church selling tickets to heaven, ladies and gentlemen, for $500 a shot. Well, they're doing a whole lot of stuff like that in America. You know, buy a pew. Buy a pew. They're, they get your family to buy a pew. And the whole family buys a pew, and that family thinks they own that whole row in the church. And you better not sit on their pew. Ladies and gentlemen, and on those people, they can live like hell and still think they're going to go to heaven because they bought a pew. Come on, somebody. Give God the praise. God is holy. God is righteous. God is, ter God is tired of this abominable stuff, Terry. God is going to cleanse his church. The Holy Ghost is going to cleanse his church. And we want you to be faithful. One more thing. Uh, oh, let's get, have some good news. Let's, let's have some good news now. There's a lady, uh, she's 39 years old, and she was rescued from two weeks of uh, wandering in the wilderness in Hawaii the, on the island of Maui. She got lost and, 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 and couldn't find her way, and they've had search parties looking for her for two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, they found her yesterday, and uh, she, she, she has a, a, a broken leg. Uh, uh, real bad uh, 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 sunburn, sun, sun, sun sickness, and uh, uh, but she says she survived by eating berries, eating berries, and drinking water from the waterfalls, and prayer, ladies and gentlemen, prayer, and the rescuers. Listen to this: the rescuers were interviewed uh, on uh, BBN, the Br British newscasting. Uh, Yesterday, the rescues, rescuer said, well, told everybody that one of the rescuers said it was the Holy Spirit that kept them in search for her for two weeks, 14 days. The Holy Spirit guided them to the rescue. So that's good news. That's good news, ladies and gentlemen. That's a shout-out for Jesus. That's a shout-out for the Holy Spirit. That's a shout-out for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Terry, the Lord sustained her. The Lord sustained her. It was not the berries, but God gave her the berries to eat, Terry. And she ate the berries, and she drank the water from the waterfalls. We know it was the Lord that sustained her, and we give a shout out. We serve a mighty God, ladies and gentlemen. We serve a mighty God. So we want you to be encouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. This world system tries to beat you down. But don't be discouraged. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Praise God. All right, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan Trogler from Marysville, Pennsylvania is going to lead us in prayer. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning, pastor. Hey, Ryan. Uh, God bless you. Well, uh, according to, well, we did that later, in fact, to that lady there, you know, John 4, 4 says we're children of, uh, children of God and we shall overcome. So. She overcame by the Lord's help. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and rising up out of the tomb because it, it, it couldn't hold you, it couldn't contain you, and death did not defeat you. 
Lord, we want to we do want to give a, a shout out and praise to all the soldiers who have defended this country and give the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, we want to uh, ask you for to give Pastor Carter the wisdom and knowledge to teach us your word again today. And Lord, we just want to send a prayer out for everybody, everybody and anybody, and we'll all be in agreement with it. And and praise God for this online ministry. And Lord, we just we just can't thank you enough. We just can't thank you enough. And Lord, we, we come to you humbly, and we just want to say we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, and praise God. And we give a shout-out to all of you all for being here in church. Praise God. Church, ladies and gentlemen, the church is wherever two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus believing. Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. And 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 God is using the online church and all online churches to open up people's eyes that there is more to the brick and mortar. The brick and mortar, they're doing their part, but there are billions of people who are still unreached, ladies and gentlemen, who are unreached. And God is using the Internet. God is using technology to help us to reach them. So let God use you. And if God puts a desire on your heart to use technology to reach people with the good news, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. And so we praise God. Well, we're going to uh, uh, give you a message today. The Lord has been putting on my heart all this week. And I said, well, Lord, what shall I preach? What shall I preach? Because God has told me earlier this year, give basics, teach basics, teach basics and that's what i've been doing all throughout this year if you go back to go to my youtube channel youtube leroy carter you can see every message that i've preached this year and their basics basic foundational messages praise god and we're going to stick with god's plan hallelujah praise god i want to talk about our new uh, uh uh well it's not new the back to basic school of ministry that we started 10 years ago it's awesome. It's getting ready to take off by leaps and bounds. This is the forerunner of the Paul Baker School, but I'm not going to talk about that yet. But we're putting together a program. God has given us a plan where people can get uh, the associate degree, the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, and the doctorate degree for less than they have ever imagined paying for a course in anywhere in the world. And and so we're gonna we're putting this package together. And we'll start school in September, so you be alert to our announcements. And uh, check out our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. That's www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. And look what God has put in together. Before long, in the next week, we'll have the whole, the whole uh, uh, schedule of courses available. We've got about 50 different course selections available to take you from the associate degree to the doctoral degree. And ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about putting together a school, an online school. It's going to blow your mind how cheap it is, how inexpensive this school is, and the caliber, the quality of the instructions is awesome. So we just praise God. Well, having made that announcement, and we'll be talking about the school of ministry later on, and then uh, later on in the summer, we're going to really talk about the new online Wednesday night Bible study, Back to Basics International. We started off with the idea of national, Ryan. Now it's international. Now it's international. Next it'll probably be intergalactical. But right now, it's now it's international. We're opening up a Wednesday night Bible study starting September 4th for people all over the world. They can all come on at one time, and it's all free. Won't cost anybody a cent, not one dime. And we're going to look at the Bible. We're going to look at what, not what man says, but what God said. I'm excited. You can tell I'm excited. I ought to just smack myself. Just calm down. Pip, pip. I ought to smack myself for being so excited. But I'm just excited because God is going to touch a lot of people's lives in many nations with a Bible study. As we look from Genesis through Revelation every Wednesday for one hour, praise God. And these lessons will be recorded so that people can have access 
on our YouTube or on our website. Praise God. So pay attention to www. Visit next week. Visit www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com and see these exciting things. Okay, okay. So I said five minutes ago we're going to get into our message. Okay, well, we're going to get into our message. And uh, we want to take a look at John 14. John 14. Um, John 14. We want to take a look at our scriptures. And uh, Jeepa, Terry, if you, if you have your Bible available, uh, would you uh, take a look at John 14 and read for us verses 12 through 18? We're going to ask Terry uh, Chiquito in Loveland, Colorado, to read our scriptures for us. For us. And that's John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. Jeep, can you do that for us? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Terry. That's Terry in Loveland, Colorado. She read the word of God off of John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. Praise God. I love this verse. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise God. And uh, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. I'd like to talk for uh, the next few minutes on the subject, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. And at the end of this message, I'm going to play a song uh, called, You're Not Alone, uh, Never Alone. Uh, but I will not record that song because we're not allowed to record someone else's songs on these programs. But after the service is over, I'm going to pre- play a song for those of you who will stick on for a few minutes. And this song will bless you. It's called You're Not Alone. Praise God. Uh, Jesus promised never to leave us, ladies and gentlemen. He promised never, never, never to leave us. We want to give a shout out to David Carter and Nayoka, his precious wife, and all the, their family in Dubai, praise God. We want to give a shout-out to Bishop Elijah and all the people in Kenya, Bishop Delphi Davis and all the people in Jamaica, praise God. <clears throat> and just Kenya and Jamaica alone, we've got hundreds of graduates from our, our school of ministry, and uh, we're going to bump it up to the next level for them very soon. We praise God for your faithfulness. We praise God that we've got men and women all over the world who are taking the gospel to the nations. And so let's join with them. Let's support one another. And uh, we praise God. And so Jesus promised never to leave us alone. Uh, He made that promise. He said to uh, his disciples, he said, it's expedient that I go away. But if I go away, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all things. Jesus said, I must go away. I must leave you. And he was talking about his death. He said, I've been with you for a while, but I must leave you. But I will not leave you comfortless. Ladies and gentlemen, the promise that Jesus made uh, to his disciples, we are witnesses of the fulfillment of of his promise, he said, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you comfortless. And I just want to say that for everybody who receives Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, 
He will never, ever leave you alone. He will not forsake you. Oh, you might be in a situation like this lady in Hawaii who was lost for two weeks and couldn't find her way and had to eat berries and drink water from the waterfalls and, and, and had to look out for animals and this sort of thing. And uh, uh, she lost her shoes in a flood. And, 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 but she was not alone. The Holy Spirit was with her. Even one of the rescuers said it was the Holy Spirit that led us to her. It was the Holy Spirit that kept her. So God, God knows no matter what situation you may find yourself in, you are never alone. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. We were praying for a friend of ours, O.C. Thomas from here in Atlanta. O.C. had suffered a stroke a couple weeks ago and a heart attack and was in, 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 in the hospital, and uh, uh, the Lord brought her out of the hospital yesterday, and she's home now. Hallelujah. O.C., praise God. You keep on praising the Lord. You're never alone. And, and ladies and gentlemen, we have all kinds of things that come against us. Satan's work is to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. He robs, kills, and destroys. He will do anything he can to pull us away from God, to cause us to stop trusting God. Satan is jealous. He hates mankind. He hates mankind. Why? Because when Satan found out that God was going to raise up the seed of the woman to uh, bruise Satan's head, Satan became so jealous, and he realized that some man, some man is going to come along. He's going to destroy me. And Satan, who had uh, taken the uh, keys to the kingdom for the rulership of this world from Adam, Satan thought he was something special. And then God said, oh, no, 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 no. I will raise up the seed of the woman. He will bruise your head. And that's what Jesus did on Calvary. He crushed Satan. He bruised his head. And, 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 and Jesus went into hell and took back the keys to the kingdom and gave the kingdom to the church, ladies and gentlemen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and now God has made us caretakers of the earth. He has restored what Adam lost. He's given it to the church. That is why Satan is creating such havoc in the church. He hates you. He hates. He doesn't hate church goers. He hates born again believers who go to church. He hates it because when when uh, God created Adam and and formed Adam after His own image, Satan said, "What? What? God has kicked me out of heaven. I've lost my estate, and now God is creating someone." who looks just like God, he walks like God, he talks like God, he acts like God, and, and God has breathed his spirit into him, and God has given him dominion over all the earth. So Satan was upset and jealous, and he's still jealous. He hates mankind, and, and now he hates anyone who receives Jesus Christ as Lord. That is why he tries to prevent people from getting saved, and once people get saved, Satan would try anything he can to try to people try to get people not to put their trust in Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, a church here down in Atlanta just this week hired a witch, a diviner, a visionary to help them grow ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, that's straight from the pit of hell. Satan is deceptive, ladies and gentlemen. He will use deception. He wants these people to grow their church based on his methods. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to grow the church, Ryan. That's through the preaching of the Word of God. David Carter, there's only one, one way to grow the church in Dubai. That's to preach the Word of God. We don't need gimmicks. We don't need uh, door prizes. We don't need all this extra mess. We need the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in his Word, as Cherry read the Word, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. And so we've got a lot of people who feel like they're all alone. We've got people uh, who have given their heart to Jesus, but they feel all alone because now that they're born again, they're saved, their family acting funny to them. 
their family's looking at them cockeyed. The family doesn't want to own them anymore. We've got people, and you may be a witness. I'm a witness. You got saved, and your friends deserted you. Your friends said, I don't want anything else to do with you now. You're, you, we can't party anymore. We can't smoke reefer anymore. We can't go to the club anymore. We can't chase after women anymore. No, no, I can't do that anymore because I've given my life to Jesus. I repented of my sins, and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and I'm going to walk according to the leadership of God based on the Holy Bible, led by the Holy Spirit. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we know, you know and I know, members of your family who don't like you anymore, some don't even want you around, some hate on you. Satan's using some to hate on you because you've confessed Jesus as Lord. Satan hates anybody who's saved. He hates anybody who will confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and he will cause trouble. He will cause sickness. He will cause disease. He will cause death. This lady in the forest in Hawaii, she broke a leg, but that did not keep her from dragging herself, trying to press on to, 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 to freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan will hit you. He'll hit you with disease. He'll hit you with bankruptcy. He'll take your car. He'll take your 18-wheeler, Ryan. He'll take your job from you. But we trust in the Lord. You see, the Lord is our source. Terry, the Lord is our source. Just like this lady in Hawaii uh, ate berries and drank water. Hallelujah. It was the Lord who sustained her. And it is the Lord who will sustain us. So Jesus promised us the comforter. He promised every believer. He spoke to his disciples and the word he gave to his disciples is a living word today. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will never leave you comfortless. He even said before he ascended into heaven, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Ladies and gentlemen, take Jesus by his word. His word will not return unto him void or empty. He will accomplish what he promised to do. In his word, praise God. He said, uh, I will never <clears throat> leave you, nor will I forsake you. And he said, I'll be with you even to the end of the age, even when they persecute you. Years ago, they put Christians in the arena, and, 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 and the lions came and tore them apart. They, uh, Nero, Nero had Christians tied to stakes in his garden, and he poured oil on them. And he lit them up as human torches so they could uh, be torches at night. He burned them uh, in his garden, ladies and gentlemen. But still, people would not uh, renounce Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, people have been, their heads have been cut off in China and in North Korea and in uh, certain Arab nations. Ladies and gentlemen, people have been put to death for their witness for Jesus Christ, but still they refuse to recant. And ladies and gentlemen, what are you going to do when your time of proving and testing comes? Are you going to quit on Jesus because the money is funny, because the blessings stop flowing, uh, because uh, sickness might invade your body? Ladies and gentlemen, there are many, many people, many Christians who have taken their lives. They've put a gun to their head and pulled their trigger. Ladies and gentlemen, what will you do when you have to face cancer, face some disease, face all the loss of loved ones, face the loss of your job, face the loss of your health? Remember, in your time of trial, and every one of us must go through a time of trial, Remember, Jesus said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people who have crossed over to the Islamic religion. Uh, many, I know many men who have gone to prison and they have converted to Islam. Uh, and a lot, of, especially a lot of black men go to prison, they convert to Islam because they want to uh, keep their health, uh, keep their they got to guard their hind parts, if you know what I mean, uh, because uh, they make girls, they make women out of some of those guys in prison. And, and they say, well, if you convert to Islam, we're protected. We won't make a girl out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you going to do when you're tested? Are you going to deny Jesus Christ because of the situation you're in? As for me and my household, Wes, 
We will serve the Lord. My son Wes is on. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's what the Lord says. We're going to trust in him. No, we're not going to take our lives when our money's funny, when we're at the bottom of the barrel. No, we're not going to put a gun to our head and take our lives. No, we're going to hold on and hold out. We're going to hold on and hold out. We're going to hold on. I'm quite sure this lady in Hawaii was tempted by the devil to jump off a cliff or jump into the river and drown when, when she could not see any sign of any rescuers on the horizon. But she held on. She held on to her faith. She continued to trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to encourage you to trust in the Lord. Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor I forsake you. Oh, I feel like preaching today. Oh, I thank God for the many things he brought us through, you and me. When things look black, he just, he just brought the sunshine in our lives. When things look bleak, he brought joy. When it looked like certain defeat, he brought victory. Oh, I know I can get a witness out there about how victorious our Lord God has been when things were bad and the doctor shook his head and gave up on you. And I know there are witnesses out there. The doctor gave up on you, told your family, get ready for your funeral, get ready for your death. And God performed the miracle. We serve the miracle working God. We serve the miracle working God. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. The Bible says, I've never seen any man uh, made ashamed who put his trust in the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Truly, God is our refuge and our strength, Terry, a very present help in trouble. He promised never to leave us, nor will he forsake us. Well, there's probably somebody here, here online today or someone listening to this recording. You're going through difficulty. You feel like giving up. You feel like caving in. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer. You say, well, I prayed. I've been like Daniel. I prayed for 21 days. I still haven't got my answer. Well, it took Daniel 21 days to get his answer. And the angel, when he came to Daniel, said to Daniel, God heard you the moment, the day you set a fast, the day you turned your heart to God, the day you made your petition known to God. God sent me forth 21 days ago to come to get you your answer, to come to give you your victory. But the angel said, but I had to fight through the atmosphere. I had to fight through the powers and the principalities and the rule of spirits in the air. I had to fight the spiritual warfare, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I had to fight my way to get to you. And now I've got to fight my way to get back into heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, God knows your situation. He's got angels fighting to bring you your victory. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. God knows when to show up. He will always show up on time. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. All you've got to do is wait on the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank God, thank God that the Holy Spirit lives inside of every one of us who are believers. Thank God from the moment we confess Jesus as our Lord, the Holy Spirit moved into our house. He moved in to live in us. Hallelujah. Thank God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, yes, we will be tested. We'll be tempted. We'll be tempted to go back into the world. We'll be tempted to go back to the old nature we be tempted to lie and steal. We be tempted to drink and smoke. We be tempted to abuse our bodies. But praise God, praise God, the greater one lives in us. Hallelujah. And he will lead us into all truth. He'll fight our battles for us if we just be still. So ladies and gentlemen, draw nigh unto the Lord. When you're tempted, draw closer to the Lord. When the devil threatens you, draw closer to the Lord. David said, King David said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. What time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, put your trust in the Lord. He will never leave you. 
He'll never forsake you. He will show up. He's a miracle God. He will show up. Ask this lady in Hawaii, will God show up? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm a witness. He'll show up. He'll show up. I ate berries. I drank water from the waterfalls. I didn't know if I'd make it, but I put my trust in the Lord. I had confidence that God would show up, and he did. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got witnesses all around us. Even in the atmosphere, the Bible says in Rome, in Hebrews chapter 12, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Ladies and gentlemen, these are those who have gone before us, who, who, who suffered like temptations just as we, but who can tell you, no, Ryan, don't give up. No, Terry, don't give up. No, Wes, don't give up. No, David, don't give up. No, Jackie Fisher, don't give up. No, uh, Herman, don't give up. Keep on trusting in the Lord. He will show up. He's the right on time, God. Put your trust in the Lord. And then, ladies and gentlemen, because every believer has the Holy Spirit living on the inside, get filled with the Holy Spirit. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me. When Satan tempts you, when Satan is drawing you to go into adultery or go into fornication or start drinking or start gambling or start abusing your spouse, no, no, no. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your faith. Fill me with the gifts of the Spirit. Fill me with the fruit of the Spirit. That's the way we roll, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way we roll. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Jesus said, Jesus said, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jesus promises. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Jesus will come to us. He will come to our rescue every time. You just call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord and watch and see what the Lord will do. Well, perhaps you're listening uh, today uh, live or by the way of the recording and, and you, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be saved. You want to be saved. Well, we, we invite you at this time to, to get saved, to, to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Just pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Stay on. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, pray this prayer. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. I confess my sins, Father. I ask you forgive me of my sins. I ask for the gift of salvation in Jesus' name, and I receive Jesus by faith in the name of Jesus. Well, if you have prayed that prayer or any form of it, praise God. Or go back to the recording and listen again and pray that prayer and believe in your heart. The scripture says you are saved. That means the Holy Spirit now lives in you. And then you ask God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Get into a Bible-believing church. Believe, Bible-believing church. Find you a brick-and-mortar church where they teach the Bible and they live in holiness and righteousness. No, everybody's not going to be perfect. The, place is, the church is a place where imperfect people become, are made perfect by the Holy Spirit. Or stay with on, us on the online church until God appoints you to a brick or mortar church. Praise God. We're going to stop the recording, but I want to play a song for you after I stop the recording so we do not violate copyright laws. And I'm going to play a song for you, and it's going to bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to bless you. If you've ever, ever felt alone, hey, Wes, hey, Ryan, hey, Terry, hey, everybody. If you've ever felt alone, Jackie Fisher, uh, as you listen to this recording, if you've ever felt alone, you need to listen to this song. So we're going to stop the recording. Get in touch with me, everybody. Get in touch with me. <laughs> 